this corn casserole with cheese but without Jiffy is going to be the best. I took inspiration from a traditional southern recipe and then added aspects from multiple South American cultures because in addition to being a southern chef I'm also an Argentine chef. I think what I've come up with is going to be amazing so let's get started. For those of you who don't know there's a recipe for corn casserole using Jiffy corn muffin mix in which you take a box of the Jiffy mix, you add a can of whole kernel corn drained, can of cream corn, some sour cream, butter, sometimes an egg, sometimes not, and then you bake it. Usually there's no cheese, but if you do add cheese, you bring it out a few minutes early and then you add some cheese and it's supposed to be really, really good. However, I really like stone ground cornmeal, so I'm starting from scratch. If you've never had stone ground cornmeal, it's kind of like comparing brown rice to white rice or whole wheat flour to white flour. It has a lot more corn flavor. It's super flavorful. If you've never tried it, you definitely need to. But if you just have regular cornmeal, I think you could still make this corn casserole. I am using what is supposed to be one and a half cups, 240 grams. I measured it by grams, not with volume, but I think that's probably right. To that I'm adding one teaspoon of baking powder and a quarter teaspoon of salt. For the corn, I'm not using cans, I'm using frozen, one one pound bag, 16 ounces, 454 grams. I divided it in half and I microwaved it on high, covered for six minutes. I shook it halfway through. Half of it I decided to cream, kind of. So I used my immersion blender and I just put it in here and pulsed it maybe four or five times. My goal was not to make it a paste, just to cream it slightly. I'm gonna add some cheese, one eight ounce block of sharp cheddar. I'm not gonna pull it out a few minutes early. I'm just going to mix it all in. I think if I mix it all in, it's gonna get a nice crust on the top and the sides, and the inside will be nice and moist and fluffy. Besides, in my opinion, playing musical casseroles is a lot of quilombo. As the Argentines would say, it's a lot of mess. So I think that's just easy. I'm going to add one tablespoon of sugar. Do you have to add sugar? No. This is going to be a lot less sweet without the Jiffy mix because Jiffy has a good amount of sugar. Since we're not using the Jiffy mix, you can leave the sugar out or add however much you want. I'm going to add one tablespoon. I'm going to add an egg for binding. I'm going to add some sour cream. Not quite sure how much. I think in a cup, but I'm going to start off with half a cup because it's always easier to add more than to take away. I buttered my 8 by 8 casserole dish. That's underneath here. And now I want to talk about the other South American influences. I'm adding some spices to this, which you might be kind of surprised by. I'm adding half a teaspoon each of black pepper, onion powder, garlic powder, basil, parsley, and oregano. There is a Chilean dish called pastel de choclo, which I guess translates as corn cake, but it's not a cake, it's like a shepherd's pie that has a cornbread topping, and then that topping is basil. I know it sounds odd if you live in the United States, but it's really good. So I said, you know what? I'm going to add herbs to this. None of the recipes I saw online for corn casserole had herbs, so I think this is going to be good. And here I have some onions and bell pepper. There is something in Paraguay and northern Argentina near the border with Paraguay called Sabo Paraguaysha. It translates as Paraguayan soup, but it's not a soup. It's actually a cornbread that has onions and cheese and sometimes red bell peppers, I think. 
I decided to add that for color and extra flavor because I'm not going to add a stick of butter. I'm not going to add as much sugar. So since it is a bit healthier, I'm adding more flavor and more color to compensate. I have half of a medium onion, one small bell pepper, I would say between 150 to 200 grams of each, and two green onions. I took off the bottom of the green onion and the regular onion and the bell pepper sauteed in one tablespoon of butter, one tablespoon of canola oil for four minutes, then I added the green parts for an extra minute. This corn casserole with cheese but with no Jiffy Mix, is super easy. All we have to do is pour everything into the mixing bowl and then combine. Right now, pretty much everything except the egg, the sugar, and the cheese is in the mixing bowl. I ended up adding a full cup of sour cream, 240 grams, and it wasn't wet enough, it was still fairly dry, so I added a quarter cup of milk. I'm gonna add another quarter cup of milk. So half a cup of milk total, 120 grams. We are learning together. So when you're making a new recipe, sometimes you have to think on your feet and adjust as necessary. I already added the spices. I tasted it and it's really good. The influence from the pasta de choclo and the sopa paraguaya all working really well in this corn casserole with cheese and without Jiffy Mix. Now I'm going to add some of the cheese, I'm going to stir to combine and then I'm going to taste it again. I am tempted to maybe put some on the top, but we will see. I held off on the sugar. I may actually not add the sugar because honestly, I think it's good as is. As I said, this recipe is kind of developing as I go. I added half the cheese and I said, you know what, I think it would look nice to have some cheese on the top. So I'm gonna go along with the traditional corn casserole recipe and a few minutes before it's done, I'm gonna sprinkle some on top. I'm not gonna do it in the beginning because I think the cheese would probably Either it would just melt into the bread, the corn casserole underneath, or maybe it would brown before the casserole had a time to cook. I'm not exactly sure, so I'm going to hold off. I tasted it. I really like it. I'm not going to add the sugar, but I am going to add the egg. This is going to help bind everything together. As I mix this in, I'm going to preheat my oven to 350 degrees. I poured everything into my buttered 8x8 casserole dish and then I smoothed it out. Once my oven is done preheating to 350, I'm going to put this in uncovered. I'm not sure how long. I'm going to check it after 20 and when I think it's getting close to being done, I'm going to take it out, put the cheese on, and then put it back in for a few minutes. I just pulled my corn casserole out of the oven. It was in at 350 for 30 minutes. I inserted a toothpick into the center and it's almost clean. If you don't want to add cheese, maybe you can let it go another five minutes, but I'm going to add some cheese on the top. I just pulled my corn casserole out of the oven. I put it back in for 10 minutes with the cheese so it was in for a total of 40 minutes. I let it cool down for about 20 minutes, then I dug in. This corn casserole with cheese was delicious, even without Jiffy. Although really great fresh corn is of course best, using frozen corn along with stone ground cornmeal gave this casserole a ton of corn flavor. The sour cream added moisture and a bit of tang kind of like adding buttermilk to cornbread. The onions and bell peppers added both color and flavor. The spices that I added, especially the basil, making this casserole taste like summer. The cheddar cheese, both inside the casserole and on top, was a great finishing touch, 
it elevated this from a normal side dish to a substantial one. Honestly, I think you could definitely make a full meal out of this for a meatless Monday or for a vegetarian meal. But if you have a little bit of shredded chicken or ground beef or even ham, I think adding that to this casserole could definitely turn it into a full meal. I really liked that it held its shape unlike some of the other corn casseroles that I saw online which fell apart when they were served. You really couldn't slice them. You had to serve them with a spoon. However, it was still nice and moist. Much more moist than most cornbread recipes. Like I said earlier in the video, I wanted to invent a corn casserole without Jiffy recipe because I really wanted to use stone ground cornmeal. However, I did want to point out that even though I think stone ground cornmeal is superior because it has more of a corn flavor, sometimes it has a bit of an aftertaste that if you're not used to it, you might find that to be a bit odd. For some reason, I don't think that stone ground polenta has that same aftertaste, so if you have that on hand, feel free to use that. Polenta is usually a bit coarser than cornmeal, even stone ground polenta compared to stone ground cornmeal, but I think it would work in this. Although my intention was not to make a fusion recipe, I guess that this corn casserole with cheese but without Jiffy actually is a southern Argentine, Paraguayan, and Chilean fusion dish. If you like cornbread and you want to try something different, you should definitely give this corn casserole recipe a try. As always, thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye!